Hello and welcome to the 741 channel. Thank you for stopping by. Today, let's take a look at my old Hammerland HQ110 that's here behind me. Now, I pulled this out of storage the other day because I was thumbing through the February 2020 QST and saw an article on this radio and thought <laughs> I ought to pull mine out and see if it still works. So I bought this radio a long time ago at the Haas Traders Ham Fest probably sometime in the early, maybe mid-90s. I don't remember exactly when it was, but this was my main uh, shortwave receiver for a while, uh, for a few years anyway, until I picked up my Yaesu FRG 7700. Then that kind of became my main uh, HF radio, but this served the purpose for quite a while. Now, up until a few years ago, it worked just fine. I think the last time I used it, it might have been dead on one or two of the bands. It really does need a full restoration, recap, new resistors, tubes, things like that, but I'm not going to do that right now. I just don't have the time or the mental energy to take something like this, take it all apart and do it properly, so I'll just kind of save it for when I do have that time. But for now, let's just see how it's gotten on and see if it works at all at this point. So really all I've done so far is I pulled it off the shelf over there and I put it on my workbench. I wiped off some of the surface dust, not even all of it, just got the loose stuff off and then I plugged it into my Variac here basically what I did is over the course of last weekend I left the thing plugged in and then I increased the voltage on the Variac by 10 volts every couple of hours or so just to bring that working voltage up slowly so I didn't pop any components that might have been marginal inside of here and it seemed like it worked it did come up to, to uh, operating voltage and the radio does seem to turn on and work Okay, so here's a closer look at the Hammerlin. You can see that cosmetically it's not in bad condition. Not exactly in good condition either, but not bad considering its age. Also keep in mind I haven't cleaned this up at all. There's some kind of scale on the front panel that I could probably get off of there with a little elbow grease, but I'm not going to bother with that right now. We're just going to kind of go through the radio and see what happens here. First thing I'll do is turn it on actually. You can see that there's a sensitivity control and the line on the knob isn't lined up to anything but right now it's completely all the way to the left and off but if I kick it on you can see the lights come on and the radio should kind of warm up here a bit as we talk so kind of just looking at the front panel and all the controls here up here is where the optional clock would have been this radio obviously doesn't have the clock installed here we have the tuning dial for 80, 20, 40 and 160 meters over here we've got 2 meters, 6 meters, uh, 10 meters, and 15. Now over here of course is the signal meter. I don't think the signal meter works, but I think the movement itself is okay. I think the electronics inside are what the problem is here. In fact, if memory serves me, this really never worked right, but if I move the radio around the needle does move, so I think the movement is okay. It's just the electronics that need work. Over here we have the CW pitch control. Below that is the antenna trim control. Then the main tuning dial is here. The on off switch and sensitivity is here. AVC, the main band switch here. Over here I believe this is a noise limiter. We have the volume control here. You can hear it's a little scratchy of course. So over here is the mode switch. Right now it's on CW and sideband. You can set this to receive or send if you wanted to use this with a transmitter. And then there's a calibration function as well so that you can kind of figure out where you are on the dial. Over here is the selectivity control. You can see that turning it all the way to the left turns it off. And then you can turn the dial to control it. And then up here is a Q multiplier. Before I tune around on the radio, let's just take a quick look at the back so you can see what's back there. So on the back, you can see there's a basic kind of tube layout and schematic here. You can see this is, in fact, a model HQ110A. There's various bits of information and then the schematic for all the connections back here. So down here, of course, this is where the speaker connects to. These radios do not have built-in speakers, so you always have to supply an external speaker. This is a headphone jack. I believe this is the meter calibration control here. This is uh, preamp power, so I guess you could run a preamp into this. Over here is the antenna connections. You can see I've just got an alligator clip onto a piece of coax, which in turn connects to my 
die pole that's out in the side yard. And then over here is a connection for an external relay. If you wanted to use this with a transmitter, you can see this one is just jumpered with a wire. And then of course the main power cord. Now one thing you may notice is that there should be two screws here to hold the chassis on. And there have never been screws in here ever since I bought it. It's always been loose and I never put screws in it. And I don't think I will now, but maybe someday when I restore this radio, I will. And then one last thing to mention here, uh, some of you will probably say that this is sacrilege and at this point in my life, I'd probably agree with you. But when I first got this radio, it was in my early twenties and I was working at a company that generated some hazardous waste and was getting rid of some old stickers they had changed over to some new ones. And I had a bunch and I was sticking them on all kinds of stuff that I owned, of course, including this radio. But uh, by rights, I would probably want to r remove this, but there's a little bit of nostalgia there for me, so I'm just going to leave it on there for now. It's not hurting anything. Again, if I ever restore this radio, I'll think about whether or not I want to remove it then. Okay, so let's see if we can pull anything in on this old radio. I'm going to start off on 80 meters since it's about 9 o'clock in the evening, so 80 meters should be working pretty good right about now, at least for local communication. And my antenna is cut for 80 meters, so that's probably going to give us the best bet here, at least to start off with. So you can see as I tune down the band, I'll kind of touch up this antenna control as I go, just to keep everything maximized as possible. So obviously I'm in sideband mode, and you can see when I get onto a signal, I can use the CW pitch, kind of like a BFO, to get myself fine-tuned in so I can hear the stations. Now I can play with some of the other controls to try and make it sound better. I think there is supposed to be a solar storm coming through tonight, so the band may be a little low in the first place, but the radio is also old and in need of an alignment, so stations are going to be a little weak. So the noise limiter doesn't seem to work, at least not on sideband. And I know the ABC doesn't work on sideband, that only works on AM. And it seems like that switch is a little messed up, so <laughs> once I activated that, things came up a bit. I think we had. 33 or 4 or something like that. Yeah, he was the, I think he was state champion or something. That's right. That's the I am thinking of. Yeah, Jim George. Jim George, that's it. Okay, so there's a little bit of CW there in the background. Now, one thing that you guys have probably been hearing throughout this segment is there's kind of a lot of hash on the radio there probably primarily from all my fluorescent and LED lighting here it's been a it's been sense. I mean uh, it, it it was my amplifier and I just kind of stayed with it um, you know I've, I've done some things to it I had to change uh, I had to change out the chokes in the back. Uh, yeah, the bait switch <laughs> went kind of nuts on me. Well, that's not an easy job. Doesn't that thing have like 15 or 20 connections to it? Yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't fun. I, you know, a lot of people rave about Miratron amps. I think they're cheap, and I think they're not very good. They cut all kinds of corners in them that they shouldn't cut, and um, I, I would never recommend one. But, you know, the, the guys come in here and they ask me, well, what, you know, recommend an amp. Well, there isn't really many good amps out there. You know, I mean, um, G 
Jeff, Jeff has. Well, what's that thing you have, Jeff? Okay, so there is some life down here on 160. I'm able to tune in a few conversations. Now, the signals seem to be going up and down. And again, I don't know if that's the band or the radio, uh, but either way, it's working. Just maybe not quite as well as a modern rig, but it is working. Okay, so while I'm here, let's flip over to 40 and see if we can hear anything up there. Okay, so caught a little bit of CW there briefly, but tuned up the 40 meter band, didn't really hear anything. Again, not sure if it's the band tonight or the radio. I'm gonna have to try this again sometime during the day and uh, when 20 meters is active and 40 is maybe a little more active and see what I get. But for now, I think you guys can see that the radio is at least somewhat functional, which is not too bad considering it's been sitting over there on a shelf for <laughs> who knows how long. Okay, so I think that's pretty much going to wrap things up for the quick overview of the old HQ-110 here. Now, like I said earlier in the video, my plan is someday to fully go through and restore this radio, or at least realign it and put some new parts in it, but I'm not going to do that until I can make it a dedicated project that I know I can finish. Until then, I'll just pull it out every once in a while and <laughs> see what happens. Maybe once it gets to the point where it doesn't work at all, that'll be the time that I, I put it on the bench and focus on it. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to leave a comment or subscribe, feel free to do that as well. And if you'd like to support my channel in another way, please consider visiting my Amazon store, which you'll find linked in the description below. Thanks for watching. You know, I got two really good amps. I've, I've got a Angelo. I've got a, uh, a Sigma 3000D, which is a, a really, really, really heavy-duty 3500Z amp. It was made back in the 80s. Allegedly, it was a, an ex-Collins engineer. He, he retired from Collins, and he designed this amp up, and he had them built in Japan.